Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Harncook, Ion Tyres, specially designed for electric vehicles, PowerShop for day or night EV charging plans, and CarLoop, data to empower Australia's EV revolution. Hey everyone, I'm Tom, this is Joy. Hello. And we are sitting in the Media Loan Xpeng G6, kindly supplied to us by True EV, distributors of Xpeng here in Australia. And I uh, also want to give a shout out to Xpeng CD, who supplied us with the glass roof sunshade above us there. So if you want to check out the sunshade and other accessories from Xpeng CD, link in the video description below. All right, so today's video is about efficiency and why it matters. Uh, for not just the Xpeng, but also other EVs as well. So let's have a look at the efficiency of the Xpeng in front of us right now. Okay, so you can easily find really good stats for the Xpeng in the infotainment system settings. So vehicle, and then you can see the energy curve there. So walk us through this, Joy. Oh, I mean, this is this is like my favorite number. <laughs> it's, it's so low. Um, so I think normally when I, like if it's school term time, it probably sits around 13. Mm. Um, Clearly, I don't drive the normal route at the moment, so it's even even lower than that at 12.9. Um, that is shockingly low. I, I That is lower than the Tesla Model Y that I was in before. Mm. And I do believe that um, Tesla were known for kind of being sort of industry leaders um, in terms of EV efficiency. So here you go. The um, mm. Xpeng is... is beating that. Mm. Yeah. And we've driven a lot of EVs and I'll tell you what, 12.9 is very low. It's probably the lowest of all the EVs we've driven in a long time. They normally sit around 16 to 20, the EVs that we normally get yeah. uh, as press car loans. And I'm not driving in eco mode. Um, <laughs> I drive in sport mode. Yes. So if I were to drive in eco mode, um, that would be no fun. But I imagine that if I was in eco mode, it would be even better than that. So mm, you would think so. Yeah, I mean, I do love my efficiency, but I, I love my sport mode more than I love efficiency. Yeah, yeah talk about mine is fantastic. This is, this is the best of both worlds. Yeah, and uh, you know, we've driven this car for 4,000 yeah. k's now. So, and that's over 100 k's, but if you look at like my recent trips, they're <laughs> really low, like really low. Yeah, um, 11. And where I think, where I think it, it seems to sort of gain all its efficiency from is regen braking and going downhill. That's mm. what I've just personally noticed. So um, if the car is going downhill, it can somehow turn all of that, um, like, well, what? Kinetic what? energy. Yeah, um, mm. into, like, go, goes back into yeah, the battery. Storage. Yeah, yeah into which, potential energy. Which I think other cars are not as, as good at, at doing it. And I don't know whether that's because maybe this car is kind of like a startup, so mm. they kind of like think outside the square or like yeah. are, are doing things Redesign kind it. of like, yeah. Yep. Um, as opposed to like other cars, it's like, well, you know, maybe they're coming from like a internal combustion kind of like way of thinking. And so it's like, oh, we've always done something this way, so this is the way we're doing it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen these kind of numbers um, and the kind of regen that it seems to get back especially going downhill. Yeah, That's what I found, yeah. So why does efficiency matter? So we should probably talk about that. So for that, I've actually drawn up a table. Let's have a look at this. All right, so let's have a look at this um, spreadsheet that I've drawn up here. So let me walk you through it. So the, the first part of the, um, the spreadsheet, on the x-axis, I've got um, efficiency in uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So the x-plank sits right down the bottom of this graph at around 11 to 12 all the way up to 24, which is something we've seen in uh, bigger cars, particularly in the seven-seaters, they can go quite high. Um, and then on the y-axis, on the side here, we've got range in usable kilowatt hours. So 50 kilowatt hours in the smaller EVs, all the way up to 90 kilowatt hours in some of the bigger EVs we've tested. And then we've just basically filled that, filled this chart out with the, the range, uh, if you were to uh, plot the efficiency up against each um, each battery size. So you can see there's a huge discrepancy depending on the efficiency, right? So looking at the Xpeng, which is uh, about 87 kilowatt hours, so 87 kilowatt hours sits around there, and the efficiency is, let's say, 13. So the range <coughs> is about 615 kilometers, if you were to look at what the setup we've got currently going. Um, if the efficiency of this car was higher, let's say 20. 20, right? If it's a really inefficient car, then that range would drop right down to 400. So you've lost 200 Ks of range. And can I just give you a real world example of, of this? Um, we've done the Sydney to Melbourne trip in this car, and we've done the Sydney to Melbourne trip 
in um, a BYD sea lion as well. Mm. And when we were in the sea lion, um, the like predicted range, because you know when you're on a, on a road trip and it, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the predicted range was off and it was too low. Mm. Um, oh, sorry, as it was, it was too high and that number just kept dropping. Kept dropping. Yep. So it was thinking it could reach its destination when it couldn't. Mm. Now, if you're on a road trip and you think you can get to your next stop, especially if you're in that watershed zone um, between Sydney and Melbourne where there aren't that many like charges anymore, you're actually going to run into genuine trouble there. Yeah. Um, and that was really stressing me out um, in, in the BYD because the number wasn't accurate. Like it would say, you know, 400 kilometres to go, but then we would drive like 100 kilometres and then it would say like 270 kilometres to go. You see what I mean? Like that, that number wasn't matching mm. the number of kilometres we were driving. Um, I had the opposite experience in this car in January. It was this exact car, it was another G6, where it would say, you know, 400 kilometres ago, we would drive 100 kilometres and it would say 320 kilometres left or 330 kilometres left. So we'd driven 100 kilometres, but um, it was actually more efficient. And I don't mind it underestimating how much mm. it can go. Um, and it was able to do more than that. I think I mentioned it in the video as well on the road trip. That was actually making me feel really like, you know, way less anxious driving, um, that it was underestimating how far we could actually go in the kilometers as opposed to overestimating how many, how many kilometers we had to go. And then I have to kind of like mentally work out, okay, well, it says we've got this much, but I'm going to have to add a buffer for if it's wrong. Yeah. So the efficiency is a, uh, it can be a source of range anxiety if the, it affects the trip computer, if it's not as efficient as the, I guess the rated range or the predicted range. Yeah. Um, that's also got to do with the computer updating itself, which it may not do. It just depends on the system, right? So if XPeng is quite dynamic, it'll update how much range you got left. And yeah, it tends to underestimate. But that's the thing, like, it, it, you don't want this kind of stress when you're No, definitely not. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So you look at the BYD Sea Line 7, right? We were getting sometimes 22s, so 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And it has a similar size battery to this one, so... Or should I say, it's a similar size car as well, so it's not like mm. we're comparing it with like a 7-seater. Yeah, 4.7 7 meters, 4.8 meters, so very similar size, similar size battery. You know, that range can drop to 364 kilometers compared to XPEN, which is traveling around 16, 17, so let's say 17 even, um, so 471. So even, you know, for a like-for-like -like car, you're losing about 100 k's of range, and that, as Joyce said, can be a huge source, source of stress, definitely. Mm. But, you know, if you don't road trip, doesn't you don't matter. Have to stress. Exactly. Yeah. Let's have a look at. Um, okay, so that's range. That's one thing. Uh, source of range anxiety. Let's have a look at costs. So, cost is another issue. If if you have a, an efficient car, obviously, you know, theoretically, it should save you money, right? And it does. If you look at the next part of this chart here, um, so you know, I've just got 50 kilowatt hours of battery, just as a hypothetical, uh, and I've got three different charging rates. So, 10 cents per kilowatt hour, which is kind of average for home charging. Uh, 50 cents per kilowatt hour if you go to a cheaper DC charger or if you charge sometimes at a DC charger and then 75 cents per kilowatt hour if you need to use say a supercharger or if you don't have access to home charging you need to rely on public charging so, so that's where I think it's most important to have an efficient car so let's have a look at the home charging scenario here in the first row okay so for 50 kilowatt hours of usable battery uh, for, for every 10,000 kilometers by the way this is what I'm using the battery on 10,000 kilometers uh, if you have an efficient car down here at 13s, you would spend $130 uh, over a, a course of 10,000 kilometres, okay? But if you have a less efficient... And just that number for all of you driving petrol vehicles. <laughs> yep, yeah. that's, that's about how much I'm currently that's paying. That's right, it's pretty cheap for us. <laughs> yeah. um, all the way up to, say, 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometres, then you'd be paying 200 bucks a case. So you might be saying $70 difference over 10,000 k's, who cares? It's a, not a huge <coughs> difference, and it's true. Uh, for home charging, 10,000 kilometres, which is on the low side of the average Australian usage, but $70 is not yeah. a huge amount. But if you've got an EV, and you're on an EV plan, like the ones with PowerShop, mm. where you get, you know, you can choose from either having two hours free during the day to charge, or, or you can have like an EV night plan and charge, you know, for four hours. At five at, cents of the yeah, yeah. yeah, super cheap rates. So it's so even cheaper. This is what you'd be, this is what you'd be yeah. taking advantage of. Then the, the difference is definitely negligible, okay. Yeah. So let's have a look at the next column or category here. So 50 cents per kilowatt hour. So this is when you know, things start to get a bit tight. So for the same scenario, uh, at, say 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer efficiency, then you'd be paying $650 over 10,000 kilometers. 
um, compared to say 20s again, $1,000. So that's starting to hurt a little bit, right? You're paying $350 more per year, um, or at least over 10,000 kilometers for a less efficient car. Okay. And then if you're unlucky enough to have to charge at a public charger all the time, paying 75 cents, and that's a reasonable cost these days. I've seen the price even higher sometimes. Yep. For the same scenario, $975 for a 13 kilowatt hour per 100k efficiency car versus a 20 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer efficiency car, you're paying $1,500 for the same number of kilometers. So that's that's over $500 extra yep. you're paying for a less efficient car yep. for you. So before you buy your EV, think about how you're going to be able to charge it. Mm. Um, are you going to be able to charge it for cheap? Um, or are you going to be able to move to like an electricity plan that will allow you to charge it for cheap? Um, or do you have to rely, like perhaps you're living in an apartment um, and you, you, know, you, you can't sort of take advantage of these really cheap um, plans and you have to charge at a public charger. So if that's the case for you, then you do need to factor in the cost of charging for your car and that's mm. when yeah, having an efficient car is going to make a big difference. Yep, efficiency does matter. And the last point I want to bring up um, also is just a shout out again to um, uh, the company called Test EV um, and a good friend of mine, Nathan Gore Brown in the industry, uh, did a uh, battery degradation test on this car. Look, he was actually doing a test on my Tesla Model S, which is 10 years old now, coming up to 10 years old. I uh, have a special video uh, of the 10 year anniversary, which includes the battery test. It's an independent test uh, that he did for that car, but he thought he'd do this car as well, which is obviously not as important, it's a brand new car, but it's good to verify that you're getting what you pay for, yeah. okay? So you'll see on the screen now the, um, the degradation test, which rated the x G6, this car we're sitting in right now, at 99.8% state of health after 4,000 kilometers. This car is literally like three months old. So look, it's not a big deal, obviously, but it's good to know that you know this car uh, has the capacity, what well, it says on the, the tin. Yeah, actually. exactly. Like the battery that they say that the car has is actually the battery that's in the car. Yeah, that's yeah. reassuring, right. And I'll put the details for Nathan's um, company there, Test EV. He uses uh, the testing system called Avalu. It's, um, it's, it uses not just the BMS, the battery management system, but then it sort of uh, uses the data and plots it against um, thousands of tests that they've done in the background uses AI algorithms to verify that result and comes up with a figure of 99.8% yeah. for this vehicle. And it's, and it's good that they're doing this mm. because as we've seen, even with sunscreen, um, you know, yeah. like the SPF that's written on the label might not necessarily be the SPF yeah. that, that's actually tested. So it's, it's really good that people are doing these tests yeah. just to verify, you know, what, what people are saying about their product. Yeah, and I think on his website, it's $175 or starts from $175 for an independent test that can be done at various locations across Australia. So those details are in the video description. But in this uh, report they spit out for you or they give to you afterward, uh, it benchmarks against other vehicles. So this x is slightly above average compared to other cars of the same age and also gives you information about um, you know the, the cell voltage and whether they're all in good health the different cells um, and the other you know, information like battery temperature um, average current yep and yeah so it's it's quite a, a reasonable report and easy to understand as well for the average consumer yeah. so if you need um, an independent test for whatever reason if you're buying a second-hand EV, for example, if you want to sell your used EV uh, to give the new buyer some confidence, mm. then I think a battery yeah. test will be quite useful because, to do. Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, fear in, in the community about, oh, you know, batteries, like EV batteries, like they really degrade, you know. Um, <laughs> we just haven't found that to be the case. Personally, we haven't found that to be the case. No. But um, this way, you're not just saying, oh, well, you know, we haven't experienced it. Like, I don't see other people. No, you can <laughs> just get the piece of paper, get them tested, and then you've got like the actual facts and numbers there. Yep. Um, and it doesn't have to just be speculation. Yeah, independent data. Um, mm. And as I said, uh, this test was done on my 10 year old Tesla Model S. So we'll have a special 10 year anniversary video of that car coming out very soon. I'll share with you uh, how much degradation that car has suffered in uh, 10 years of life. <laughs> suffered. Suffered, well. <laughs> Yeah, it's not too bad actually. Suffers the wrong word. Uh, experienced in 10 years of uh, its life, over 120,000 kilometres. All right, any final thoughts? No, but um, yeah, I just, I, I really do love this car. I know people are going to say that I'm terribly biased because I've got a long term media loan. Um, but yeah, this, it's just a, it's just nice on the inside. Um, 
and it's just a, a, a pleasure to drive. Mm. Yeah. I'm actually and, curious. Sorry, go on. Well, I was say that's that's for me. That's the thing. It's like you need a car that makes you happy when you drive, and yeah. this car makes me happy when I drive. I'm very curious to see how much improvement the new G6 will have next year when mm. it comes to Australia. And you know, you're going to ask me and enjoy it. How does it compare to the Zika 7X, for example, or the IM fives and sixes that we, we're going to drive very soon? So we'll do a comparison video of that. Those. Um, of those cars uh, as well. So stay around on the channel, we'll talk about that in a separate yep. video. Because there are lots of good cars in lots. in this segment of the market, We're which I think small. is mm. fantastic for people out there who are looking for a new EV. Mm. So much choice to uh, fit different needs. Mm. All right, well, that's it from me, Tom, and Joy on Ludicrous Feed. Until the next video, it's happy charging. <laughs>